Hello. Waterfowl. Everywhere, surrounded by them and surrounded by water here in Shropshire's Lake District. If you want to find out more, keep watching third rate content. And welcome back to third rate content here on Thursday, the 15th of June 2023. Can you believe we're already halfway through June and only six days? before midsummer, halfway through the year. But anyway, we're here in Northwest Shropshire at Ellesmere Lake and Ellesmere Town. And we're gonna have a walk around them, see what we can see and see if we can learn anything while we're here. So uh, buckle up and I'll see you out here. You are starting our walk just on the edge of Ellesmere Lake by the boathouse, this lovely uh, Edwardian former boathouse which is now a very nice restaurant. I have had Sunday dinner here a few times, probably not for over 12 months but in my estimation the best Sunday dinner in Shropshire that is some claim and it's been about over 12 months since I've been here but back then it was the best. Yeah, this is new since I was last here this uh, boathouse bar and beer garden making the most out of the sunshine, the heat wave and the beautiful settings. Yeah, the, the island we're just looking at is known as Moscow Island. And it got that interesting name due to uh, Napoleon indirectly, because um, the island is man-made and it was made from uh, all the backfill, the, the dirt and the, and, the, and the stuff that was left over from Ellesmere House when Ellesmere House was built in 1812. Because it was in 1812 that N Napoleon, after invading Russia, had to withdraw from Moscow due to the biting Russian winter. But the island didn't uh, get its official title till a few years later. Um, probably after the Battle of Waterloo and the actual ultimate end of uh, Napoleon as a dangerous and, uh, you know, dangerous to the British Isles despot. Yeah, and from the back, but that is a lovely little chocolate box. I imagine boating house or something to do with the mere. Yeah, lovely. cream for sale right now get it now get it while it's hot <laughs> oh i do love a good joke if you can call it a joke <laughs> again another look at moscow island in early spring herons actually um nest on moscow island and you can watch them in the boat house they usually have a camera a bit intrusive <laughs> but they don't mind so Ellesmere Lake is the largest natural lake in England outside of the Lake District. But um, if you follow the scientific, uh, the strict scientific reasoning, it was formed by retreating glaciers after the last ice age. But if you want a more <laughs> folklore sort of story, the story is... It was an old lady, a hag, a witch, a water guardian, however you want to look at it. But she was in charge of a well that stood on, on this very site. And she was very jealous of her well. And she used to lock it up so that nobody else could use it. But guess what happened? With her locking it up, uh, the well um, got inundated, flooded the whole area, and left us with Ellesmere, which is 20 meters deep. 
around most of it. But of course, that doesn't answer um, <laughs> how the other meres and lakes were formed because we're in Shropshire's own mini lake district here, what with Colmere, Blakemere, other meres all around this area. We won't be visiting, we won't be visiting them today, but we may well do on another video in future. Yeah, just beside the mere is Ellesmere Town Park. And we'll go and have a little look inside because Ellesmere has a sculpture trail. I don't know if we're gonna get them all today, but we'll have a look at some of them for sure. This sculpture is called The Sisters. And this sculpture is to commemorate um, the sisters Eg Eglantine Jeb and Dorothy Buxton, who founded uh, the Save the Children Foundation um, after World War I. So it was a very noble thing, and, and they were from Ellesmere. So quite, a, quite an amazing fact there. Yeah, you've got two sculptures here. You've got refuge that, that has been made out of oak, and it's part of the Children Displaced by Conflict project to commemorate the centenary of the Save the Children Fund. Then you've also got this very interesting, it's the first one I've ever seen up close and personal, this labyrinth. And it's a journey of discovery, a shared experience in which worlds in different scripts evoke a sense of being lost and ultimately finding refuge as you walk the pathway. Obviously these were used in um, way, way back in uh, sort of pre-Christian um, religions and you sort of walk the path to initiation and enlightenment. Should we walk it? Yeah, let's do it. So here is the start of the labyrinth. Let's see if we get initiated to a high level. center of the labyrinth. Yeah, a relic of uh, Ellesmere's old canal boat past. Because Ellesmere did have quite a extensive um, canal boat and um, canals history and we're hopefully going to have a look at that later in the video. Yeah, we've made our way from the sort of promenade over there and we're on the side of the mere now. You've got this lovely, these lily pads. I wonder if Jenny Greenteeth's down there waiting to grab you. Yeah, Jenny Greenteeth, the malevolent water spirit who uh, holds you down under the, and pulls you under amongst other horrible things. Thanks, I do hope not. But speaking of water fairies, folklore and um, there's another folklore tale attached to Ellesmere so let's find out about it yeah so this legend is concerning a water a water fairy or water nymph named ass race not ass face as, a s r a i i s ass race a gentle water fairy who lives in the deep, dark depths of Ellesmere's, Ellesmere's Mere. This benevolent creature only rises to the surface every, once every hundred years to see the moon when it's full. So it's no surprise that no one has ever witnessed this ritual. There is a curious story of a fisherman who one day was out fishing on the mirror and accidentally caught an Asari. He was so intrigued with his catch, he determined to show off the beautiful fairy to his friends and relations. 
so he tried to take her home with him. Unfortunately, as soon as she was touched by the sun's rays, she melted into foam. She would have melted quick today, with it being 30 degrees. But yeah, interesting story. So the fisherman lost his prized catch, probably the best catch he ever made in his life. But he was lucky in a way because the beautiful, gentle Astaris are not the only things lurking below the surface of Ellesmere Lake. There is another much more sinister fairy because an Ellesmere angler did discover this one day when he chose to disobey the golden rule of not fishing on the Sabbath on a Sunday. And his catch, but he did catch something when he was fishing on the Sunday. And that was the devil, old Nick. <laughs> so I would say this story, the end of it, is sort of a, a Christian churchy sort of story from the very dogmatic days of Christianity in the 16 and 1700s. Probably sort of propaganda to try to not try to get you not to do things on a Sunday that you enjoy doing because it was all about resting and spending time thinking about the Lord, I think. deserted and abandoned. I suppose this little shady area with the nice trees is like the town square. And you've got people hanging out, enjoying the shade. This is the old town hall and at the beginning of the 19th century um, this area would have been very marshy. The old town hall actually built on the, uh, the site of an old mere and is built on piles of uh, foundations 30 feet driven into the old, the old uh, mere. And here near the wharf are these lovely cottages. Can anyone tell me in the comments what they're called? and when they were built and the people's occupations who lived here. I know I'm not asking a lot. Here's a random Ellesmere history fact for you. Did you know that after the Nazi invasion of France in World War II, Charles de Gaulle and his family lived at Gadlas Hall near Ells Ellesmere. Um, Obviously, while they waited for France to be not occupied by the Germans. But yeah, um, just a couple of miles out from, from this very spot. Yeah, we're just here at the wharf side of the Ellesmere Canal, the section that is left in Ellesmere, which is now known as the Langollen Canal. The waterway of the Ellesmere Canal was a, a proposed route to carry a traffic on the canals between the river, rivers Mersey and Severn and obviously linked up the northwest of England with um, the, the mineral producing areas of North Wales and eventually with the West Midlands, the industrial West Midlands. I wonder when the last actual load that this crane lifted was, what the date was, just, just wondering. Unfortunately, it, unfortunately, the um, Ellesmere Canal was never completed fully and was never used as intended obviously sections of it were um, in use but it wasn't all linked up looking at the wharf building one of the wharf buildings yeah this uh, Tesco's right by the wharf side head of uh, Osmere Canal Shops Union Canal Langollen Canal is very sympathetic to the 17th to this 18th century buildings here building 
local lady just told me this. Um, they actually used one of the actual wharf buildings from the 18th century, reused it and uh, made it new and made it a Tesco. So it's nice that it's being reused and uh, here in the 21st century. Cool. I wonder how many boats, how many narrow boats over the years have undertaken this process of turning around. Probably thousands upon thousands and obviously they're still coming thick and fast today with pleasure cruises. Of course, the canal um, back in its heyday was very much, uh, well, exclusively um, a work, um, industry, commerce, channel and um, artery. But today it's purely for leisure and pleasure and holidays as you can see this gentleman turning the canal boat round like thousands must have in the past but purely on a leisure basis lovely to see though look at that the pure english folklore of that brilliant even got his yamaha 50 as owned by all working dads in the late 1970s and 1980s. Still popular though. That one's got a bit of rust on it. It's care worn, I think they call it. Yeah, wear and tear, as a gentleman just said. here 72 hours max. which is three days it's not bad really that is it you can move on somewhere else that's the beauty of narrowboat holidays i'd like to go on a narrowboat holiday at some point it's a pipe dream won't be happening immediately how english it just is cricket. Yeah, these sort of paintings on the boards here, are very traditional looking, and these are the sort that the real bargies had back in the 1700s. They fairy tale esque. As you can see, the canal branches off here into a Y. Now boats go in each way. My favourite goddess, Isis. I really did hate it when the terrorists took on that name. Really disrespectful. My other favourite goddess is the Morrigan. I don't worship him or anything. I just, I just like him. <laughs> yeah, back in the earlier days of canal boats, narrow boats. Um, horses would have towed them as opposed to the motor engines they've got now that obviously that only came in later but but the barges would actually have to extend um, a plank out from the side of the boat and sort of use their feet to just uh, get the boat under maybe one or two blokes doing it and then the horse would go up up the side and come back down to the other side of the towpath the towpath under the bridge added later. Oh, I bet this view has hardly changed at all since the heyday, you know, mid 1700s, the heyday of narrowboats and canals. It looks absolutely stunning today. Gorgeous. Narrowboats loaded with tons of limestone, coal, milk and cheese, Duchess, Countess, Jupiter, move slowly on the way to Whitchurch. And did you know that Whitchurch is the home of Cheshire cheese, even though it's in Shropshire? Interesting fact. Swan and Signet. <laughs> I love it when they go on. Yeah, I don't, well, I'm sure this isn't a pleasure craft. Canal and River Trust, looks like this does, um, this is like the vehicle, the carry materials and conduct work on the on the canal side, you know, on the, the banks when they're eroding and other sort of stuff. 
Maintenance is the word I was looking for. Yeah, everything looks so gorgeous in this sunshine. You'd think I'd be bored of it by now with us having well over a month of basically unadul unadulterated uh, sun and summer weather, bar for the odd one or two thunderstorms. But I haven't. I could look at it 12 months of the year. It's just so gorgeous, luscious, verdant and green. Yeah, we're gonna walk through that tunnel. Yeah, so this bridge, road goes over the top, still in use today, and obviously narrowboats underneath. And this has been here since uh, the 1700s, when the um, Cow Canal was first opened. Low. I've got my sunglasses on so it's exceptionally dark in here. I probably should have took them off. Just keep going. Just keep going. Hello there. He's just uh, grazing in the meadow. And here is Ellesmere uh, Basin or Marina, whatever you want to call it, where all the, all the narrow boats moor up. We're just coming into the oldest part of Ellesmere now, um, around the church and the site of the former castle. And this is where Ellesmere, um, the original part of Ellesmere grew up. Yeah, and quaint and pretty cottages abound. And this is the White Hart public house, grade two listed. Built in the, uh, as it says there, 16th century, late 1500s. It's timber framed with a plaster infill on the lower floor is stutter code on a brick plinth with a slate roof. There are two stories and three bays. A lovely uh, Georgian fronted houses. I don't know if they're actually originally Georgian. I probably think not here though, in the oldest part of Ellesmere. Just up this hill is what is now Ellesmere Bowling Club. But go back a thousand years, on this uh, promontory overlooking Ellesmere was Ellesmere Castle. Let's go and have a look at the site where it stood. Yes, yeah, so you can see the mere, the church, which we'll have a quick look at shortly. <laughs> and one of the, one of the bowling greens and one of the guys who's, I think, working here says that this is a crown green. Because there are two codes of bowling in uh, England. There's a um, crown green bowls, which means there's a, 
a bump in the middle of the green, which is the crown. Much more uneven green. Every green is different. And you've got flat green, which every green is flat. You have four balls instead of two and a jack and in, in flat green. And it's a different kind of game because the, the greens are all the same, whereas every green is different in crown green bowls. Wow, I take it that's the clubhouse of the top green. Amazing clubhouse. Look at what it's overlooking. Beautiful. And another absolutely beautiful green. It's not square, this one. It's kind of hexagon-ish, though not exactly. So anyway, right here where the green is now, once stood Ellesmere Castle. And um, most of the early mentions of Ellesmere, you know, going back a thousand years or so, all generally um, pertain to the castle. It was a timber structure. Never, it was never made out of stone. And um, it was basically out of commission before the middle of the medieval era. Yeah, that is what you call a clubhouse with a view. Wow. But you can see why the castle was built here. I think St. Mary's Church, that was here when the castle was first built. Um, but it, it's been extensively remodelled uh, in the 1800s, I think. But, but part of it dates right back um, a thousand years. And just looking on into Wales, Obviously, I've just said it, you can see why the castle was sited here. Um, but also, going back further on the layers and layers of history, you can see why I imagine there was a site here in prehistory, along with a religious site close by, because the pattern keeps repeating of um, religious sites being on previous religious sites. You can see right into Wales here. And you can, again, you can see why the castle was built here with this amazing view. But so much history has happened in northwest Shropshire, you know, going into North Wales, um, into Cheshire, up to the sort of Wirral Peninsula. All around there was hotly contested um, back in the medieval days and before. But I mean, there's not much written history that tells us about it. I mean, we can sort of um, gather what happened, e.g. lots of fighting, lots of castles being destroyed. Um, lots of invasions by the Welsh, then re-invasions by the Norman stroke English. Um, and it went on for years and years. I mean, you've got Whittington Castle not far away. Um, and it's so much happened here. Um, we've, we've touched on some of it, but there was so much of it not written down and then destroyed by fire and sword as the years went, went by. <coughs> of course, Sir Francis Drake was famous for playing bowls and um, telling his playing partner, I can't remember exactly how the story went, but that he had to finish the game before he went and embarked on his ship to fight the Spanish Armada. So, I mean, it really is a part of English folklore and history. Bowling, just like wrestling, really. But, um, but, Crane, but uh, Francis Drake didn't play crane green bowls. He would have been playing flat green bowls because he was in, in Plymouth. And down there, they play flat green. And up here in the Midlands, in the north, it's all crown green. I'm not 100% sure about in the 1500s though, but it was probably flat green. Yeah, this is, I think, my favorite crown green uh, bowling club stroke green that I've ever been to. And I've been to quite a few actually, what with being a crown green bowls child in my years under 10. Yeah, I even prefer this one <coughs> to the one right next to Ludlow Castle. That's a crown green uh, green as well with the, the Ludlow Castle overlooking it. But this is the best, I think. This is the best I've ever been to. St. Mary's Church is a grade one listed building. It retains some Norman features, but it sort of um, follows the Norman pattern of after invasion, they'd move into a new town. Um, build a castle, Motton Bailey Castle. They'd uh, built 
build a church over the site of the Saxon church, which itself was on the site of a previous religion's church. And they would also have a market. They'd implement a market that they could tax, obviously, right next to the castle usually, so they could keep a close eye on it. So you had everything close together in a Norman town. Yeah, open, open tomb here. And what is this? Our insect hotel. Look at all the bugs. <laughs> They're making that the bog hotel is occupy. If that's even a word. Ellesmere Church was um, restored several times during the 1800s so it changed its appearance both interior interior and exterior as an ornate victorian font the church is built in sandstone with slate roofs and has a cruciform plan this consists of a nave north and south aisles north and south transepts a chancel with north and south cha chapels and a tower. The tomb effigy of a man of letters from the 1300s. So thank you for watching to the end of this week's third rate content. Our trip to Ellesmere. We had a lovely look round the mere. We've looked at the canals. We found the site of the old castle and St. Mary's Church. It's been a lovely, wonderful mid-June trip out to North Shropshire. If you enjoyed today's video, and you might have enjoyed it somewhat if you're still watching now, please think about leaving a like, possibly subscribing if you haven't already. Yeah, all subscriptions really count on our march to 1,000 subscribers and um, leave a comment. I do love a good comment. I read them all and I reply where applicable. And also feel free to share if you'd like to. But anyway, if I don't see you soon, I'll see you three times as soon. Third rate content, sign out. Bye-bye.